Are you experiencing knee pain when you're doing the Olympic lifts, squatting, or trying to get stronger? If so, we're going to break down what's going on and give you something that can help you today. Hey everyone, it's Drew Dillon from Project Lift, and in this video, we're looking at knee pain when it comes to the Olympic lifts. Now, knee pain is pretty common in the Olympic lifts, and the result of that means the causes are pretty common. So there's a lot that we can do without having to go see a chiropractor, a PT, or a doctor. Sometimes we do have to take that step. And in this video, we're going to break all of that down. Now, if you're watching this video, I imagine you want to get better at the Olympic lifts, and if that's so, I encourage you to check out our visualization exercise for the Olympic lift athlete. This is going to help you bring your focus and your attention to your training, to the competitions, and you're going to see your training and competitions go through the roof from a performance standpoint. Now, once this video helps you, make sure you share it forward with a friend. Help somebody else out. Smash that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe because new videos are coming each week. So let's start off with defining knee pain. Now, it's fascinating when we start talking with athletes about defining pain. Depending on how much an athlete's really given it time and attention, can you describe, is it soreness? Is it feel stiff? Does it feel tingly? Does it burn? Is it sharp? There's a many different ways that we can describe physical sensation, and that's where we need to start. Where is this knee pain at? Is it on the outside, inside, uh, below the kneecap, above the kneecap, under the kneecap? And getting very specific with this, this is going to help you in figuring out where the cause may be. And also, very often, knee soreness, knee pain comes with a increase in volume in training. So all of a sudden, maybe you've started a squat program on top of your normal training, or normal training, you've increased the sets and reps. And very, very often, we see that to be a component of knee soreness. And if so, what we're going to discuss in this is really going to help you today. Our first step is mobilizing the area. And when we're looking at mobility, what we're doing here is we're looking at the muscles that surround the area that's in pain to help loosen those muscles, get those muscles to relax, so then we can bring back good movement to the area. Now, there's a caveat here I want to tell you about that you typically don't hear about in mobilization. When our muscles get tight around an area that is sore or, or tweaked or injured, it's a defense mechanism. So mobility isn't necessarily a cure as much as a opening up to then bring back proper movement. If you open up an area only to have it retighten, open up an area only to have it retighten and this just continues to go, you could be putting that area at more risk. So I want to bring that to your attention. Now, when we look at the mobility, I want you to think, okay, we're focused on the knee. We're going to think upstream and downstream. And this works, yes, for the knee, but every other area. Look at the muscles above the area that's injured and below the area that's injured. So some big ones here for the knee is the quad roll. There's the calf roll. And we can also get into that hamstring. There's three easy ones that we can go after. So that's where I'd have you start. One of the most prevalent causes of knee soreness in the Olympic lifts goes down to the foot. So we need to look at the foot and very often when athletes increase volume, when athletes are just getting into the lifts, their foot activation and function of their foot isn't up to par with where they want their training to be. And when that's the case, when the foot's not activating well, the rest of the chain all the way up to the hip suffers. And our knee is the first one that shows us. So even though the, the issue's at the foot, the knee, because it's a hinge joint, will show us the discomfort first before anything to do with the foot or ankle or any of that. So what we need to do, we need to open up the foot, right? Our feet are shoved in shoes all day long. We need to open them up and get the bones in the foot to move. There are four layers of muscle on the bottom of the foot alone. So we need to open them up get them moving again. From there, we need to find our three points. And when I talk about three points, I want you to think of the base of the big toe, base of the pinky toe, and the heel. We need to have pressure at those three points. And when we do it well, you'll notice your arch lifts up 
and you'll even feel your glute turn on. This talks about that entire chain up the leg that I mentioned, so we need to activate those three points. Finally, we need to practice those three points, and one of my favorite exercises is a wall lunge, where we get set up to a wall, in a position that we can easily lunge. We have our hands on the wall, and this is important when we're starting to train our foot. It takes away from the body having to figure out other things and allows us to give a lot more attention to the foot. And we're going to slowly, keeping that front leg loaded, lunge down, keeping our three feet, our three points active in our foot. Now here's the kicker. We're only gonna go as deep as we can keep those points of pressure in our foot. If we find our knee collapsing in, if we find that arch dropping, if we find ourselves you know, lifting up the base of the big toe, losing one of those points, that's our limit. And that's what we're using the wall lunge to increase and train through. And to wrap it up, we need to look at the hip. So I mentioned this chain of the leg, right? We, it's, it's from the foot all the way to the hip, and the knee is typically the thing that shows us that there's an issue in this chain first. So when we look at the hip, we need to stabilize the hip. And I'm gonna highlight two things here that's gonna help you do that. One, it's our breath. Are we able to breathe down into our abdomen, create good intra-abdominal pressure, especially deep into the pelvis? Can we breathe deep into the pelvis? This is going to assist us in creating stability in a big way. And the second thing, once we start to be able to create good intra-abdominal pressure down into that pelvis, is then utilizing unilateral movements, one-legged, one-side movements. So our lunges, our lunges come in in a big way here because when we have our feet together in line and say a squat, it's easy to hide the instability in one side of the hip. Our body can shift and, and take over, but when we go to the lunge, it really highlights when things are breaking down. So we got to get our intra-abdominal pressure through good breath and core work, and then take it in to our unilateral movements to help stabilize that hip. So if this video has helped you guys, again, make sure you pay it forward. Let us know down in the comments questions that you have. We love to give you guys support. And until next week,